we have Mr. Brian Lubin, who is a entrepreneur, podcaster, and real estate investor. He runs a successful podcast called The Action Academy, where he talks to seven, eight, and nine-figure entrepreneurs on how to earn freedom in life and in business. We're going to be diving in. Do you want blissful balance in your personal and professional life? Great. What's up, guys? My name is Kerry Jack, and I want to help you. Happy hustle, a life you love, one full of passion, purpose, and positive impact. I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur, a professional model slash actor, a digital marketing specialist, a podcast host, author, a biohacker, an eco-warrior, a martial artist, a hippie cowboy, and a humanitarian. My goal is to educate, inspire, and entertain you to live a life of passion, purpose, and positive impact. It is time to happy hustle your dream reality. Yee yee! All right, Brian Lubin, welcome to the Happiest Podcast, my man. I'm super stoked to rock the mic with you. Dude, thank you so much for having me, man. We're gonna, gonna bring some happy, we're gonna bring some hustle, and we're gonna have a hell of a freaking 60 minute interview here. <laughs> Let's go. And I mean, you, you are an entrepreneur, a podcaster, a real estate investor, a happy hustler through and through, but you weren't always that way, right? You, you quit your corporate job actually quite recently in March, 2022, and now you help empower other people do the same. And I'm really excited to get into how you did that and to talk about your new book from passive to passionate and all the good stuff regarding that new book coming out. But before we get into all that good stuff, Brian, what's something interesting about yourself that not too many people know? So what most people don't know is that, um, and this is, this is actually going to tie into the point of the show. So in today's show, we're going to talk about, and this may sound heavy for some people, but it's not. Uh, you can take it however you want to. But the point of today's show, we're going to talk a lot about financial freedom. We're going to talk about passive income, investing, side hustles, entrepreneurship. But the real, the real, real of it is the, a lot of people don't know the reason why I do all this stuff. And it's not to jet set around the world. It's not to live in Mykonos. It's not to post a really cool picture on Instagram. It's so that when I grow, when I have uh, a family, when I settle down and, you know, I become a husband, I become a father, I'll be able to be there for my future kids. Because growing up, a lot of people don't know that, like, I was raised in a single mother household, even though my dad was there for some of it. <laughs> Thankfully, they got divorced, but he was never around. So he worked air traffic control 12 hour days, six days a week. Uh, he had no intention of being a father. He was just barely surviving work. And so mm. by the time that they, uh, I grew up, I was just like, I had zero relationship with him, zero relationship with him to this day. And it's my life's mission to be able to go and be like very present when I have kids to pick them up from school, drop them off, you know, go to the ballet recitals, the basketball games, all that good stuff. And so now I'm helping a million other people do the same thing so that they can do that with their families. And then mm. all of a sudden, boom, you got impact at scale. Dude, love that. And, you know, me being a recent father, I can so resonate because that's really what it's all about. Happy hustling, you know, making memories with your family, your friends, not being a slave to the grind. You know, I know this is all stuff that you actually teach in the Action Academy, and I want to get into it and just kick things off with a bang because, you know, you talk a lot about how to actually achieve that financial freedom. What, what are the, the main verticals that you suggest if we're going to talk about, all right, how to get that passive cash flow? Is it real estate? Is it investing in businesses? Is it both? What's your go-to strategy to uh, achieve that passive income? Okay, yeah, so I gave you the secret sauce for, you know, 10 easy payments of $10,999. <laughs> uh, right. No, man. So it's, uh, it's, it's multifaceted, right? So everybody has a different definition of winning. So that's the first thing is defining what that looks like for you. Um, yep. My long story short, which we'll get into in this podcast is I was in corporate America. I left that job for your corporate career um, in March of 2022. I quit went to go travel the world full time uh, for eight months and then built my own business while doing it. So if anybody's listening to this podcast and you want to uh, get build $10,000 a month of passive income so you can quit your job, travel the world, build your own business, this is the podcast for you. So that's probably 99.9% .9 of you guys. And there's a couple of different uh, facets that go into it. Our main assets, if it's asset specific, we focus on real estate and business acquisition. 
So buying small businesses and buying real estate, which will establish the passive cash flow, you know, ear quotes for all of the people that are listening that actively invest in real estate. It's a degree of passivity, depending on what yeah. you do and how you do it. Um, and then we also will build our own businesses on top of that and build your own brands. So we can get into all of that. But um, at the end of the day, there's three things that people need to hit true financial freedom and leave a corporate job. And it's what I've been spending hundreds and hundreds of thousands of hours of working on is this kind of formula. And the best I've come up with is like this three legs to this stool, right? This freedom stool. So leg one is you need fast, active cash. So mm. it's going to be very difficult for you to passive income your way purely passive income your way out of a six-figure position. If anybody tells you that you can in a shortened time frame, they're full of shit. Plain and simple. Um, it's just a lie. You cannot go buy randomly $40 million of real estate in one year. Like there's, that's the anomaly. That's not the, the standard. So passive income is great. It just takes time to build. So you need active cash flow, an active cash flow vehicle, which is one leg. You need a passive mm. cash flow vehicle, which is the other, which is building the equity and the wealth. And then mm. you need a brand along the way documenting the journey of the growth. So mm. then if you have all three of these established, then all of a sudden you've got cash flow coming in that you can use today to pay your freaking bills and leave that job. You have equity and passive cash flow that's building over time. So that all of a sudden you pick your head up five years later. And now you've got $20,000 a month coming in on top of the active. And you've built yourself a nice personal brand on top of it and an audience with which you can monetize and then build your own brand on top of that. That's kind of the trifecta. I only think yeah. about this a little bit. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, no, man, it's solid, um, you know, wisdom shared right there. The three-legged stool, you know, the active, like, here's the thing. People all want passive income. I love this term. My buddy Ian Stanley talks about almost passive income because there's really truly no passive income, in my opinion, that I've found. Right. Like everything takes a level of activity to set up, right? It, it's, it, it's just unless you have something that is like truly passive, I think activity is required on the, on the forefront initially. But like you said, you have an active cash vehicle to acquire, you know, resources to then put into passive vehicles and then building wow. a personal brand throughout so that you could document the journey. And then you have that brand equity and you can build that no like, and trust that's imperative. So I love that. Well, let's talk about someone right now, just to, in terms of mindset, I know you're big in a mindset when you are on the cusp of quitting, but you haven't quit yet, or you want to quit. There's a lot of quiet quitting going on out there. There's this epidemic, right? People like are showing up to work, but they're not really stoked. They're not happy. They're not productive even. And it actually costs the U S workplace a ton of money and the global workplace. But eventually you come to this decision point like you did right in March, 2022, Walk us through that mindset of what it took to actually quit and what you recommend others do to actually, you know, rip the bandaid. Okay. So a couple questions there. So you're asking, so we could talk about the general framework. There's a four-step framework that I recommend for people that are actively trying to leave the job. And then uh, I feel like another question in there was what caused, what was like the catalyst that got me over the edge? Essentially. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I'll do the four step. I'll do the generally applicable advice first, and then I'll share my specific story second, because I think that will benefit the audience. So there's a four step framework for leaving your job. Most people do it backwards, right? So first, I want to share a revolutionary statement that may blow some of your minds and blow your socks off. So I hope you're all sitting down. All right. <laughs> so guys, you want to take out a, pe a pen and a piece of paper for this one. You can build a side hustle and invest while you are still working your job. Whoa, right? <laughs> Who would have thunk it? And along this process, your family will be less stressed, you will be less stressed, the world at large will be less stressed, and you will be way happier in your pursuit. So the first thing in the first step of the process is you do not want to run away from something. You want to run towards something. So that's the first thing that we want to do is establish what are we actually working for and what are we working towards? What do we freaking want out of life? So Carrie, there's an example I like to share where people are uh, at this entrepreneurship car dealership, right? And you're looking at all these different vehicles and you're spending all of our time walking around this dealership and we're looking at 
do I want to be online courses? Do I want to build a mastermind? Do I want to do real estate? Do I want to do drop shipping? Do I want to flip houses, buy businesses, all these different vehicles? And then you get in your vehicle, you pick one, you start driving down this endless highway, but you've never taken the time to set the destination or your GPS. You're just driving. All of a sudden you pick your head up. It's been a month, a year, a decade, and you're still driving. Mm. You haven't stopped it for gas. You haven't gotten a tune up. You haven't changed the oil. And all of a sudden your car breaks down. What does this look like? It looks like disease, di divorce, um, depression, anxiety. That No wonder everyone's car is breaking down. They never understood where they were actually driving towards. So mm. that's the first thing we do. We set our GPS. So for mm -hmm. me, um, I wrote this in my book from Passive to Passionate. And there's also a book that I highly recommend, uh, Vivid Vision by Cameron Harold. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I set my three-year vivid vision and your vivid vision is what your life and business looks like in detail. You can wave a magic wand in three years. You're writing it as if you're experiencing it in present day. So I wrote out my three-year vivid vision in corporate in my cubicle in 2020. And I said, I wake up in Mykonos. I wake up in Greece and I can walk out on my balcony and I can see the sun rising over the horizon, over the sea. And I have no calls in the morning. I can work anywhere in the world. I do what I want, what I want with who I want. I could travel anywhere with a Mac and a mic and make money. And I wrote out this whole extravagant six-page vision for what my life looked like. And so I knew what I wanted. I knew where mm. I was heading. Mm -hmm. And so everything works backwards from that. So step one is you establish what you want. For me, my big exciting life was traveling around the world and podcasting and doing all this stuff. Like that was exciting for me. For you, it may just be, you want to be able to pick your freaking kids up from school and drop them off. Maybe you want to go move to that cabin in Vermont and just go back to oil painting like, you've, like you used to do when you were a kid because you really loved painting, but now you're a corporate accountant, right? <laughs> so it's just like define what that looks like. So once yep. we have that defined, now what we do next is we pursue our, building our financial foundation. So when you're doing your financial foundation, we're taking that dream life and we're quantifying it. This is where you, you match the art and the science in Tony Robbins' terms. So the art is the vision. The science is the implementation. So the science mm. is, how much does this dream life cost? I want this house in this zip code in this place. It doesn't matter. You can go as big as you want. But now we're just figuring out, what's that mortgage going to cost? You know, if, I, if you want to go live on the lake and you want to have a boat and you want to raise your kids on this specific boat, how much does that boat cost? And now you're like taking all of this into a, your monthly number. And that's going to be your freaking number that you're working towards. So now not only do we have an end destination for what our life looks like, but what it costs. All right. And so now we start chiseling away at that. And now this is clarity. Now we have a goalpost. We understand what winning looks like. And for a lot of people, that's between five to $10,000 a month. That yeah. will get them there. Um, and it's not that unapproachable. So now we start investing in real estate, starting our own businesses, buying businesses in order to get that five, ten thousand dollars a month. And you'd be surprised it could only take one or two investments to get you there. Then after that point, you take all of your disposable income remaining and you invest all of that into people. So this is going to be peers, partnerships, communities, mastermind and coaching. So what that does, and this isn't a plug for me or for Carrie, it's just blanket truth. Every single millionaire that I've interviewed on my podcast, which I've run daily for two years, every single one of them investing people in coaching, courses, community, and mastermind. Because what it mm -hmm. does is it folds time. You take somebody's 10 years and you condense it into 10 months for you. And then that's what you do to accelerate success. So now you have your vision, you have your clarity, you have your passive cash flow covering your fixed expenses, and you haven't, you're getting started with your foundation. Now you have a group of coaches, partners, and mentors that, you're, that are there for your support. And now you start to start swinging for the fences, uh, building businesses and buying businesses with these people. So uh, now you've got these people in your corner to where you can work together and then really scale this thing through partnerships. And then that is the four-step framework that has worked hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times for me and all my people. Yeah, awesome. I mean... It blows my mind, but people really, they, they don't have a clear vision. Just that first step. Nobody. You know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's actually quite sad, you know. And again, I think about just simple archery terminology. You know, if I'm going to go elk bow hunting and I can't see the elk, I'm going to miss every single time because yeah. 
I don't have a clear target. But yet most people don't have a clear target in life. And most people, carry are, are spending all their time looking at the, the make and model of the bow. They're like, I want this <laughs> yeah. bow. I want this true. arrow. Oh, these are the best arrows. These ones fly further. <laughs> you know? Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's true. They're not so, asking where the hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you got to get clear on your vision. Then you got to get clear on what does that dream life actually cost, right? Mm -hmm. Then you want to actually figure out okay, what's that passive cash flow vehicle look like? Is it real estate? Is it investing in business? And I do want to stay there for a beat after we, you know, get this, um, this four step knocked out, which is the peers, the partnership and the mentorship, you know, mm -hmm. that that's like, I mean, some of my best decisions ever were to, to invest in myself, invest in conferences, invest in mentorship and invest in masterminds. You know, I know we both host our own communities and, and, I still invest and I know you still invest and it's, it's like, there's no substitute for that. Even if you have your own, it, it's like, it's just, it's the not secret sauce to expediting your success. But let's go back to just like that passive cash flow. And when you talk about investing in real estate, like that's so broad, right? Just there's so many different, you know, ways to invest in real estate, not saying it's broad in terms of you know, I know you're, you have a specific strategy and that's what I want to extract. Cause like mm -hmm. if you bought a single family home, it's going to be different than if you bought a multifamily apartment building, right. Which is going to produce different returns. So when you talk about, you know, your first real estate investment, let's say for everyone out there, who's like, okay, this sounds great on paper. Let's get to the brass tax, Brian. What, what, what is that investment look like? If you, if you do want that passive cash flow in real estate. Cool. So I will say right now, I can give you an, uh, an answer that it's going to be the best for a pure beginner, lowest risk uh, in, into real estate. And then I can also give you the general answer, which is it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And people don't want to hear this, but you can take, you can blindfold yourself, pick a dart, throw it at the wall and pick one of these asset classes and just decide to master that thing. And you will mm. become a millionaire over time. You know, every single one of them is difficult. Every single one of them is fruitful and every single one of them is worth mastery. It just depends which one works best for you. So I always mm. tell people, it's like people view choosing your asset class because this is the biggest issue people run into. I, I did hundreds and hundreds of intro calls with people before I even launched my business. And now I've, I've ran my business with hundreds and hundreds of people. And over and over again, it's shiny object syndrome, right? I can't figure out which asset to pick and I jump between this and this and this. So I yeah. tell people, I was like, stop, stop freaking out. View it like a food court at a mall. You're going around and you're sampling the chicken and the beef and the sandwich shop and the barbecue. And then you're like, holy shit, I love barbecue. <laughs> and that's where you sit down for a meal. So you just go and you get your, your hands dirty in the thing. You try the free sample, you chew it, you swallow it. And then you're like, okay, is this where I want to be? Or is there something better? So, you know, there's all different real estate asset types. You can do short-term rentals, which is like mm. Airbnb. You can do self-storage, which is where you lock your stuff up. You can do multifamily apartments. You could do mobile home parks. You could flip houses, wholesale houses. There's probably 20 different strategies. The single best and easiest way for somebody to get started in real estate would be what's called the house hack or the co-living strategy. This is what I did when I was working my corporate job. It's where you go and you buy a house you live in one bedroom, you rent the other bedrooms out. The ancient Egyptians called it having roommates. <laughs> right? it's, not that, it's not that hard. Um, so that's what I did, man. I bought five bedroom, four bathroom houses, and I would live in one bed. And in the basement, I would have buy houses with in-law suites, which is where they had two kitchens. So it was almost like a duplex, if you think about that, in yep. a traditional house. So I'd live in the basement. And I'd rent the upstairs out and it wasn't that much different from my apartment. And I did that for four years. I lived in the basements of my own rental properties and I would put 5% down on the property. I'd live in it for one year. And then in the beginning, I would break even on the mortgage. And then when I left, I would do what's called cash flow, to where I'm actually making money on the property. So I was making $4,000 a month purely passively from my real estate investments when I left my job. And that's what I would mm. recommend is doing that method because that's where you're doing like the least amount down payment. You know, it's yeah. the safest investment. If you need to get out of a freaking house, it's very easy. You can just sell the house or rent the house yeah. 
there's no short like there's a huge shortage of that there's no shortage of tenants looking for houses right now if you buy in the right areas yeah yeah and that i mean that is a strategy that i know is available to just about everybody and i think mm -hmm. there's a new regulation i i think you you i saw grant cardone talk about it and i think i saw you posted about it too but December 18th, is that correct? Or no, is is it November 18th? November 18th. There's a new strategy. Yeah. yeah, tell people about that. Yeah, so November 18th, um, they're doing 5% down payment. So the same down payment as buying a single family home, you can get up to four units. So it's called mm -hmm. a quadplex. You can get a duplex, a triplex, which is three units, or a quadplex, which is four units. So you can live in one of the units and rent the other three out. So where I did the rent by the room, you can do a rent by the unit. And this is just a good way to get your feet wet in real estate. I would say that I wouldn't expect crazy cash flow over your first couple of deals. That's not really how real estate works. But over a period of time, uh, that's where the equity starts to build up and it compounds. And then that's when you start really reaping you know, the rewards and the benefits. I just sold those properties and made hundreds of thousands of dollars cash in my pocket. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with those investments. Yeah. And that's, I mean... That's making it more accessible than ever too. the five percent down payment that, you know, Fannie and Freddie are, are implementing. Right. And it, it's um, it's something I think everyone could potentially if they wanted to get into real estate do. Now, if you have a family and you have kids and you're like, I don't want random people living in the same, you know, under the same roof, then you would sure. want to look at, you know, separate units probably. Right. But mm -hmm. if you're single and you, you know, you're willing to have roommates, then I think it makes sense, the co-living strategy. And I know multiple friends of mine who do that, you know, successfully. And, and um, you know, it is, it is a strategy. W what would you say is like the next tier up? Like, I know our mutual friend, Chris Berg, is up to car washes now and he's like all yeah. about it. And, you know, so I'm like, what, what would you say is like the next tier if, if you're going to go from beginner to maybe intermediate real estate investing? All right. So because this isn't like a purely real estate show, I'll try not to get too insider baseball and I'll talk more general terms. So we'll go an intermediate strategy and then we'll go to an advanced strategy, which I'll give yeah. you guys a spoiler alert. It's how I made hundred thousand dollars in 48 hours. So this is going to be more so aligned with what you guys are like talking about on here with digital courses, creation, um, personal brand, all this stuff. Um, so now we'll bake the boring stuff with the sexy stuff, but that's where magic happens, it. right? It can't all be sexy. You need to have the foundation secure first to be able to mm. have the sexy. That's what I try to preach. And I call it, yep. you know, passionate income, which we'll get into that in a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Apologies for interrupting your programming. But I have to tell you, the best investment you can make in yourself is one in which helps you acquire skills. You've probably heard people talk about, oh, just invest in yourself and you'll be successful. Yes, that's true to a degree, but you have to invest in skills that will ultimately help you achieve your desired results. And I think one of the best skills one can possess, be it an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur, is the sales sword. Really knowing how to sell, utilizing pressure-free persuasion, which will make you more money and more impact. Now, if you want to know how to sell more efficiently and effectively, I just launched a sales course called The Proven Roadmap Process to Selling Millions of Dollars and Helping You to Increase Your Conversions Guaranteed. And you can get access to this new sales course that The Happy Hustle is launching at thehappyhustle.com forward slash sales. And if you act fast, you'll get it at the lowest price it'll ever be available because we are launching it and we want to gain amazing testimonials and social proof to further share this knowledge. So if you act fast, you can get it at the lowest price it'll ever be. That's at thehappyhustle.com forward slash sales. Now let's get back to this episode. So the intermediate strategy is when you learn and you realize that you can buy real estate without any of your own money. That's where life becomes fun. You have what's called private money lenders to where you go buy a really crappy property. And this applies with car washes. This applies with multifamily. This applies with single family. You go buy a really crappy property and you look at it and you underwrite the numbers and you say, okay, if I fix this house up, this house will be worth $200,000. Right now it's really crappy and it's worth $50,000. Now, before people come at me with pitchforks, this is just an example. The principle still <laughs> applies, change the numbers. 
Um, yeah. So you have, you know, if I fix this house up in this neighborhood, a fixed up house like this would be 200,000. I buy it for 50 because it's really run down and needs work. And then you're like, this is going to take at least $30,000 of construction to fix. So you would go to a private money lender and say, hey, I need $80,000. And you would have the construction covered and the purchase price of the property covered. And what you do is you'd go buy that property in cash and then have that construction sitting there. And you would go renovate the property. Once it's renovated, then you'd go rent it out. And it's got nice new kitchen, new bathroom. It's got new paint. Uh, you've got a tenant in there paying you rent. And then you, what you do is you go to the bank and you say, hey, bank, this is a really pretty property now that I just bought. And it's, it's beautiful. This is definitely loanable for you guys because a bank won't loan on a crappy property. They will loan on a pretty property with a tenant. And you say, hmm. I'd like to do what's called a cash out refinance. And the hmm. bank will uh, go and value the property, which if you do it correctly, will be at that 200. And all of a sudden, now you get you get that 200 back or the 150 back. So you pay back that, that investor and now you own the property free and clear. So people have done this thousands and thousands and thousands of times. It's called the Burr strategy, buy, mm -hmm. rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. And then that private money lender, you paid about 10 to 12% interest to that guy or girl. And now they're over the moon over a couple of months because they're like, man, I just, this is fun. And they'll just be like, let's do it again. And then they'll tell their friends about it. And then all of a sudden you can do that at a larger scale. So that's the intermediate strategy. And then for people that are, you know, I don't want to get too insider baseball in that in like, <laughs> like fry people's brains with real estate. Uh, but then we can get into like the whole uh, personal brand and like online education space, which is where I've made like a good chunk of money too. So I'll pause there and let you kind of direct. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think all the happy hustlers can track that. Like you're not speaking over their head. We got a, a, a real smart okay. tribe. And I mean, the Burr method, buy, rehab, refinance, repeat, you know, this is definitely something that is, it's accessible and it's it's been proven and tested, right? Um, I do think there is some people whose probably ears perk up and they're like, okay, e-com, personal brand, scalable, yeah. <laughs> not having to swing a hammer or fix a toilet. Now that's, you're talking dirty to me, Brian. And, you know, I, I'm i curious because my buddy, Chris Crone, I don't, do you know Chris by chance or no? Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. a big real estate investor. Yeah. So he just talks about buying and holding it. I'm just curious, is that sure. the same for you? Because you mentioned you sell, you sold a couple properties recently. And yeah. I'm wondering, would you recommend just holding those after you did that, you know, that cash out refi and then you yeah, just hold the, on to them? The, that's the game plan. Yeah. You hold on to them. But the reason that I sold is my own personal reasons. Like, because you look at ROI and the ROI was fine, but my ROE was off. So my return on equity, my return on energy, and my return on effort. I was like, hmm. I would rather have a massive cash cushion to go do bigger, better, different deals and also hmm. be able to operate my own business from a place of abundance instead of scarcity. Um, yeah. Because runway is what makes you dangerous. It doesn't matter. The, the, the economy, the world, the customer base does not care how good you are or how good your product is. It's like your emotions and your level of freedom directly depends on how much runway you have. So mm. it's like if you're operating with a year's worth of cash in the bank, like you can take really calculated risks with your business and swing for the fences. And um, mm. as, as opposed to if you're like, if I screw this up or if I don't get this sale or if I don't get this customer, like I'm not going to be yeah. able to pay my employees next month. All yeah. of a sudden, then you've left your job for freaking hell on earth. Don't do that. So for yeah. me, I got two years of cash in the bank, baby. I don't <laughs> got a care in the world. I can operate my business as a happy hustler <laughs> because <laughs> I sold those properties. Yeah. No, I hear you. I mean, and I call it commission breath. You know, it's like you, you just reek of it. If, yep. if you are desperate for the sale and desperation never sells. Uh, so you have to like operate from that abundance. And, um, you know, I do think, it, it makes sense to have that liquidity as well, especially given the tumultuous times with the economy. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Maybe some better deals come up and you're liquid and you can jump on it, right? So let's get into the personal brand and, and kind of how you've grown Action Academy. And just for the people out there who don't know what Action Academy is, let's start there. 
Yeah, so Action Academy at the large scale is my media company. It's my it's my brand. So we unlock entrepreneurs. That's our tagline. So we help people replace corporate with cash flow and help you unlock your inner entrepreneur. And I say unlock intentionally because I don't believe everyone's meant to be an entrepreneur. Uh, if you're listening to the show, you probably are. But most people aren't, and that's okay. Um, and we need to be okay with that. Not every single person is cut to the point where they need to go create their own business and let, have – uh, handle the levels of risk and reward on top of that. They just want to work their job, be comfortable, have their salary provided for their family. Awesome. Run your race. But if you're listening yeah. to this show, that's not you. So at some point, you guys have been a square peg trying to fit into a round hole um, your entire life, through school, through college, through corporate. And now you're trying to break out of this mold and do your own thing. So that's where we come in. We help unlock you through passive income, active income, get you out of that job, get you into entrepreneurship. So that is the podcast, Action Academy podcast, where I interview multimillionaire entrepreneurs uh, daily for the last two years. I've done it over 33 countries, eight time zones, never miss an episode. So we've had over 500 guests, um, multimillionaires, a couple billionaires. It's been a blast. And so just about every strategy under the sun we've covered. So like, that's where I get to learn everything is like talking to these guys and girls in depth. And it's a wealth of knowledge. And it's been super fun to share. Mm -hmm. So podcast our, our entire business model is we give all the information away for free and we sell the implementation so it's a little bit backwards so what happened was and this is where i made a hundred thousand dollars in 48 hours punchline um so what i did was i was traveling around um i quit my job i moved to greece i live in the greek islands for a month and then i'm traveling around europe and then i moved to brazil and i'm kind of wondering like what's next like what am I supposed to do now? Because everyone here wants to like go travel the world and like quit their job and be like, oh, I'm going to go sip pina coladas on the beach. It doesn't work like that. After three weeks, you're hungover and sunburned and you're bored. Sorry, I don't want to rain on the parade, but this is what led to uh, my entire identity and what I literally wrote the book on now is passionate income. Talk about passive income. This is passionate income. Passionate income or what, your Jap or the, what the Japanese call your ikigai is the intersection between what you're good at, what the world wants, what the market needs, and what you love. And so that is basically, in layman's terms, how do you produce income doing something that you would happily do for free? All right. And so passionate income is what I was like, huh, well, I want to keep working. Just because I don't have to work anymore doesn't mean I don't want to. But now I get to make the rules here. What do I want to work on? And I was walking on the beach in Brazil, Copacabana, Be Copacabana Beach, and I was just like, nice, you know, what? And I lived there for three, three months. I love Brazil. And I was like, what is the next thing for me? Like, this isn't, none of this is fulfilling me. Like, there's got to be something. And then the, the freaking thought hit me. I need to go from me to we. I was like, everyone is asking me how I quit my job and I'm traveling around the world and I'm not bankrupt yet. I was like, so how about I help other people do that? I was like, yeah, that's it. I'm going to make a course. I'm going to make a course. I'm going to make a course. So I run back to my house in, in uh, Rio, and I was just like, I'm going to go book a house in Florinopolis, Brazil, off the freaking grid, just lock yep. down, get some Wi-Fi, shut it off, and go into monk mode for a freaking month and just record a course. So I recorded a 52-hour course detailing every single step of the process, every single part of the journey. And while I was doing that, on my podcast, I said, hey, guys, I am doing uh, what's called Freedom Calls for 15 minutes. I will coach you for free, no expectation, no offer, just I want to get to know your problems. And I was like, I'm going to use the feedback to make the course, right? Yeah. So I did this Smart. wacky thing called talking to my customer, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> which nobody does. <laughs> so yeah. true. And so it's called market research. It's called market <laughs> research. So um, here's some pro, tip, pro tips for people. When you're making content, you're not ready to build the side hustle until people begin organically asking you for help on something. And then at that point, you create a free offer, and you collect emails from the free offer, and then you build the thing. That's mm -hmm. how the game goes. That's, if you do it that way, it's going to be hard for you to fail. If you yep. guess, you will probably fail. And you'll waste True. a lot of hours and months and years of your life. So if you're posting content, painting, painting wedding portraits you're like a live painter and someone's like oh my god how do you do that like there you go if you're doing freaking arts and crafts they're like how do you do that there you go there's always something 
And so people were asking me left and right, how did you do this? So I hosted 100 freedom calls for free. Um, I did the math. It was about 42 hours of direct coaching. I would just say, hey, what do you need help with? Where are you at? Where are you trying to get to? What are your roadblocks? How can I help? And I would coach them. I said, cool, thanks. And they'd be like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Thank you so much. I just say, thanks, bye. And then a month goes by. I start making the course. Before the course was even done, I send an email out, one email out to all the 100 people. I say, hey, I'm building a course off of what we talked about. It's like the 15 minutes times, you know, <laughs> 52 hours. Uh, 1,500 bucks, sound good? And 65 of them said yes. And so I made over $100,000 through Cash App and Venmo in 48 hours. Love it. So that was pretty sick before the course was done. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, sit tight for a couple of weeks and I'll get it to you. And I did. And so everything worked out and everyone was super happy with all the, with all the material, with all the videos, had them all edited. I really did it right. And then I threw everyone together in a Facebook group. And all of a sudden something crazy happened, which is the most important part of this story is the business that I thought I had was the wrong business. Mm. So everyone's in this group and they become best friends with each other because they're all the same person you know, that listens to the podcast that wanted to interact. And they started doing deals together and partnering together and meeting up in person. And I was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is a paid course with a free community. No, no, no. This is a paid community with a free course. It's like, I'm in the wrong business. Let me flip flop mm. this. And that's mm. the mastermind model. And the yeah. mastermind model, since then, that's my flag that's firmly planted into the ground is I think that online courses I would not start an online course business in 2024. I would go all in on community, hand-holding, mastermind, like together in the trenches, you know, freaking Zoom calls saying, hey, you've got this freaking rental property. You got this 20-unit multifamily you're looking at. I own 2,000 units, like from, from a coach or a mentor. I own 2,000 doors. Let me look through this with you and poke holes in this. That's what people are craving now is that. Yeah. You know, not yeah. more modules. They want like, live shoulder to shoulder face to face mentorship and accountability. So that's what we built. Now we got over 200 members We're doing about 700,000 this year um, of annual recurring revenue, not just revenue, yeah. which is way better. <laughs> and it actually so adds an enterprise and it adds an enterprise value to your company. It helps you with cash flow management so you can hire people and pay salaries from a back end. And then from a front end, you know, it's like you have it just cuts your time down so much faster than a course. Um, cause the course can have the best information in the world. Now I've spent over a hundred thousand dollars on courses. I could go listen to the best course ever. And I'm still not going to pay attention just cause I'm ADD. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, cool. So we have a rule in action Academy. There's no video modules that are allowed to be more than 10 minutes. Hmm. I was just like, we can't do more than 10 minutes. So each one is a specific thing. 10 minutes, like show what you got to show, move on to the next and then have implementation yeah. and calls along with it. So that's what we built, man. Yeah. And that's what I work on 24-7, 365 now. Yeah, I love it. I mean, you said something that I totally, it brought me back. It was like PTSD where I didn't pre-sell a course and I spent so many hours yep. <laughs> putting together this. Because uh, I, I would always get hit up, dude. I was like, you know, in the acting modeling game and people would be like, how do I get an agent? How do I get booked on commercials and shows and all this stuff that I was doing? And I was like, all right, let me put this course together. I put together this badass course and then I launched it and it was crickets because I didn't have the right, you know, product market fit or the, the, the copy. And I mean, we sold a couple out to, to be fair, but it's so much smarter to pre-sell based on customer feedback and needs. And so I'm so glad you mentioned that. And I'm really also glad that you mentioned in 2024, like the mastermind model, in my opinion, is the bread and butter. And that's why we have the mm -hmm. Happy Hustle Club and our community of happy hustlers. And I know you have the, you know, the, the same like um, concept where you bring people together, you build that community because for any real positive change, it takes community, accountability, and expert mentorship. So when you can combine those three yep. things into your, you know, your product or service, you can really change lives. And I, I do, I, I love the the reoccurring membership model. You know, that, that I think is huge. I should connect you with my friend, Amanda Moriucci. She, she, um, I'm going to build something in the, the future where it's, it's 
in a sense, like an app, but it's community based, but you would be primed for it. You're talking about enterprise value. And if you yeah. have a community and you, you fit the specs, she's the number one female uh, app development company in the United States. Um, she was Inc. 5000, but she's, she's a happy hustler and part of our tribe. And so anyway, the point is like at some point when you get to that membership model and you want to actually have enterprise value, like you can exit a, a membership community and that that's mm -hmm. like a, that's a whole nother game. But, you know, you talk about um, doing it like Hal Elrod, a buddy of mine, just texted me this morning. Like he's got the Miracle Morning community and he's got his own app and he's got, you know, 15,000 members all paying him monthly. And that, you know, has massive enterprise value where if you ever did want to exit, this is the game at a higher level. So you start from personal brand, you start solving people's problems at a profit, you build community around it. And then there's another level to it. Um, man, this is great stuff. Let's, let's talk about your book. Just, uh, I know people are probably like, all right, I got to get this dang thing, but just tell people, you know, <laughs> really <laughs> what, what would be the takeaway if, if you had to distill it or the through line throughout, like, and, and who I guess exactly it's for. Yeah. So the book is for that person that's working that job right now and they're really stuck in multiple different ways. Like, because I know all the problems that you guys are running into. So buy the book if one of the following applies to you. You're lacking clarity. You have no idea what the hell you want to do, where you're going, or how to get there. Uh, you're lacking the confidence because you're like, I don't know how, capital H, how to do it. So you don't have the where, you don't have the who, you don't have the why, and you don't have the how. <laughs> so all the key ingredients to bake the pie that you're trying to bake here. Um, so you don't have the clarity, you don't have the cash flow. That's another thing. You don't know how to invest in the real estate, buy businesses, start businesses. So everything that we're talking about here, uh, we bake in the book too. So I'm like, hey, here's how to build a recurring business. Here's why to build it. Here's how to manage your cash flow. Here's how to build an org chart. So it's all the journey from you know investing to leave your job to what happens after you leave your job. Because everyone talks about financial freedom. It's like it's the end destination. I'm like, bro, no, it's the beginning. Right. Because financial freedom is only the first level. Then it's time freedom and then it's mental and emotional freedom. So it's like you can't have time freedom if you don't have systems and processes in place. So that's what the book is for. It's from passive to passionate, how to quit your job, grow your wealth and turn your passions into profits. And so spent 1,137 hours this year working on the book. We went through 19 edits, spent about $19,000 on it. Who's keeping track? Because I wanted to do it <laughs> the right way. And yeah. so uh, I went all in on it, man. And I had some really cool people helping me with it and wrote, wrote the foreword and wrote like Amy Porterfield, freaking baller online business, $80 million yeah. in course sales, Jay Papazon. Uh, that's, you know, the one thing. I had people like Brandon Turner, Bigger Pockets podcast, huge real estate author, Mike Michalowicz that wrote Profit First, all yeah. endorsing the book. So that's my, that's my jam, man. I'm freaking glad I did it. Now it's out like, pretty soon <laughs> <laughs> yeah man and i know what a labor of love a book is so kudos to you for putting in the work and and i know it will help a ton of people where where can the happy hustlers go to get it so what we'll do uh for this is for the happy hustlers you know mm. the book isn't technically live yet so we'll have the audio the audible book we'll have the ebook and everything live uh here shortly but for you guys what we'll do is we'll open it up for the paperback. So if you want to buy the paperback or pre-order the audit, the um, ebook for like a dollar, uh, you can go to passive to passionate.com and Carrie will link it in the show description. And yep. then there you'll be able to get a free chapter. If you want it, you can go buy the book directly there and we can go ahead and get that thing. Amazon prime shipped to you immediately. Two day ship and shout out <laughs> Jeff Bezos. <laughs> yeah. Love it. All right, guys. We're going to link that up, but from passive to passionate.com, right? And, you know, yep. get yourself a copy of this book. Maybe get some for your friends as well, because, you know, this is especially your corporate friend who's like super unfulfilled. You know, you know that person. This is a great gift for the holidays. So, you know, you give them, you give them the gift of freedom. That's a. Uh, Man, that's what everyone craves, the three freedoms, right? Time freedom, financial freedom, and uh, creative freedom. So love this, man. Yep. All right, let's get into the happy hustle hacks, and then we'll put you through the rapid fire round, then we'll wrap this up. So happy hustle hacks, first and foremost, being health. You know, I like to label a, a tip, a tool, a tactic that is uniquely Brian, something that you do for your health that maybe isn't, you know, so common. Anything come to mind here for a happy hustle hack in the health arena? 
Oh, heck yeah. Doing nothing. It's like, it's important. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I, I, something, so this goes into the category of mental health, but yeah. um, you can't hustle and grind your way to a million dollars a year and beyond. You have to do it different. You actually have to create what's called margin. So like after this, I've got a window where I'm like, nothing. So I'm going to go walk around the river. I live downtown Austin, Texas. So I'm just going to go on the river walk right here. I'm going to go just go get some vitamin D, get some sunlight, take the shirt off, walk, maybe do a little jog. I have nothing to do, nowhere to be. And that's what you need for everything, man. It's just like that. And then also uh, a little hack, you know, I need to get an affiliate from them, but I've been loving my eight sleep, the mattress. I love that mm. thing. Uh, so for my sleep, that thing has been helping a bunch, man. Um, I dream a lot now and I get, I can really track my sleep. So that's been sick. They need to sponsor nice. us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's get that a sponsor. If you're listening, eight sleep. Um, but yeah, I, I appreciate the, the do nothing component. I have, um, sits C I T S a part of my book framework and it's just sits your ass down and chill in the still. So, uh, that's, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm all about it. Let's, let's talk about money. We talked about money, you know, throughout, but, specifically like a happy hustle hack here, you know, maybe something you do to save, spend, or invest wisely. That's maybe a little, again, uniquely Brian that we could label a happy hustle hack in the money game. Sure. So the irony is that the people that think about money the most are the people that don't have money. So it's like people say that money is the root of all evil, but it's like the people that are killing it don't think about money that much at all. I don't really think about it that much. Um, I think about value. That's all I think about. 24 seven. So mm. people that are focused on money, you know, that's like a transactional relationship. It's one unit of exchange. But if you think about value, that's scalable. So mm. I would recommend instead of thinking about how can I make the most money? How can I provide the most value to others at scale? And then you will never worry about money again in your life. So mm. that's what I do. So that's why I go on these podcasts. That's why I wrote the book. That's why I make content 24 seven. Because I'm just like, man, how can I be more valuable and provide more value to other people today? Because the more value that you provide for the, for the longer amount of time, the bigger that your offer can be later. So the reason that those people all signed up for my $1,500 course wasn't because, and they're still in the community, they're about to renew, uh, wasn't because I was some random dude DMing them on Instagram. They were listening to the podcast every single day, and I was just making micro deposits every day. So by the time they talked to me, like they were already like their cups were full. So I just made them overflow. So when I made an offer, you know, I can make that $1,500 offer. So don't go like post a couple TikToks and think that you can just release a $5,000 offer it does not work like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Focus on value. And, and, and it's a little cliche. Sure. But it, that's the, that's the game at the core. Like how can you be more valuable to the marketplace? Boom. Start yeah. there. All right, let's talk about spirituality. Do you have a happy hustle hack, a way that you can connect to a higher power, anything that you do, you know, that maybe is a little different, maybe, um, you know, something around meditation or breath work or prayer or anything specific come to mind for uh, spirituality? Yeah, D, all the above. So yeah, I think all of us have done this before where we get this apartment, which that's like another side tangent. I never thought that I would rent again, but I'm loving renting now. Um, after living in the basement of my own properties for four years, uh, I've got a beautiful apartment in Austin, Texas. And every single time I get an apartment with a balcony or a pool, I'd always be like, oh, I'm going to be out there all the time. And you never are. <laughs> so <laughs> now this time I've got this beautiful view of down the downtown Austin, Texas skyline. And every single morning without, without like fault, I am down there. I drink my freaking athletic greens in the morning and I drink my water. I go downstairs. And I have like a 10 minute gratitude. I've got my chair that I sit right on the edge of the freaking pool. And I post on my Instagram too. I'll look out and I'll get the sunshine and I'll be thinking about my day and have that gratitude practice. And I'll say thanks to God and all that good stuff. So dude, all of the, all of the above. And that's how I start my day. Yeah. I mean, it's so important just to A, get that vitamin D, but B, to connect and just say your gratitude, man. Practice an attitude of gratitude, such a catalyst for happiness and joy. This has been great, Brian. Man, I, I, I got to put you through the rapid fire round. Then we're going to wrap this bad boy up. So this is just where I ask you random questions and you answer honestly. First thing that comes to mind. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Favorite food. Go. 
Favorite food would be steak. Favorite movie. Favorite movie. <clears throat> God dang, dude. Um, favorite movie, favorite movie, favorite movie. Um, I'll go Remember the Titans. <laughs> That's a good one. Favorite book. Favorite book from Passive to Passionate. No. Um, I'll tell you that my <laughs> favorite one right now, because I have so many favorite books, my favorite one right now is Unreasonable Hospitality by Will Guidera. I love it. Nice. What's your spirit animal? Spirit animal is a tiger. I actually did a meditation out in the freaking forest with a shaman and tiger came to me. <laughs> nice. Best business advice. Best business advice. Mm, I would say lead with value for your employees, for your team, for the customer. If you put the customer first, it's harder. It's much harder to lose if you put them first. So I would say lead with value. Hmm. Oh, okay. Three things you're most grateful for. Three things I'm most grateful for. Uh, my life, my business, and my people. I love it, man. Oh. I love everyone that I'm around. I, I could care less about money. I think that people are the ultimate store of wealth relationships. So I love that, man. I love helping people on my business. I help, love being with people in my life and having these beautiful, beautiful relationships. Like I'm even in Austin, Texas, down the street from Hal Elrod myself. So I'm just like, heck yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> heck yeah. Um, if you had a billboard with your last piece of content on it and the whole world would see it, Brian, what's that billboard read? Last piece of content would be don't go into debt to convince yourself to hustle harder. Mm, love it. Man, Brian, I just want to take a moment, brother, to acknowledge you for sharing your love, your light, your wisdom, your, your passive to passionate new book that I know you put a ton of time and energy into, your Community Action Academy. And uh, yeah, just for showing up and happy hustling, man. So uh, I appreciate you and looking forward to collabing and connecting more in the future. Thanks, brother. Talk soon. Thanks for having me, guys. I got one more question for you, though. What does happy hustling mean to you? Happy hustling means being in your path, your purpose, and your passion, man. Living your vision, being 1% better every single day. You're not always going to be happy. That's some bullshit, right? It's just a facade. You can't be happy every day, but, man, you could be 1% happier today than you were yesterday, no matter what happens. It's a gratitude, it's an attitude, and it's a muscle. So flex mm. that muscle daily. Mic drop, y'all. Brian Lubin, check him out, passive to passionate.com. Get his book. Check out the podcast. We actually rocked the mic. So you can check out that episode. And then if you're interested, the actionacademy.co, you can apply there and uh, go deeper on building that financial freedom. This has been awesome, Brian. Thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. We are out. Peace and love. Boom.